All right, this is fourth grade, module five, lesson five. And in this lesson, students are gonna continue using visual models to represent two equivalent fractions. Uh, for example, one third is equivalent to three ninths. Uh, the difference in this lesson compared to the last lesson is the last lesson we used tape diagrams to, to represent the equivalent fractions. This time we're gonna kind of use more of an area model. So imagine instead of a tape, like a big old long ribbon being cut into smaller pieces. Now we're talking about more of a square being chopped up like a, like a brownie uh, and then cut into smaller pieces as well. So let's get started on that. So it says to draw horizontal lines to decompose each rectangle. And here we see that we've got a half as indicated right here. I'm going to put, okay, that's a half. And we can see that we've cut it into three rows. We've used two slices to create three rows. So parents and teachers, don't let um, this three rows cause your students to make three slices. No, 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 no. We want three rows, which requires two slices, right? And so, in fact, I'll make that more obvious. Boom, 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 boom. So we're going to cut here, cut here. And we've now created our three rows. And what are we seeing now? Well, we now see that our whole has been cut into six pieces. And three of them are shaded in. So that's three-sixths. So one-half is equal to three-sixths. So I'm going to locate that over here. And another way we could think of this is, well, here's a sixth, here's a sixth, and here is a sixth sixth, so one-half is equal to one-sixth plus one-sixth plus one-sixth, and that's equal to three times one-sixth. All right, so um, all of this is guiding students towards what ultimately is going to be the kind of like the standard algorithm of saying, well, if you multiply both the numerator and the denominator, oops, by three, if you multiply both the numerator and the denominator by 3, you show that 1 half is equivalent to 3 sixths. That's guiding the, our students towards that standard algorithm. But at this point, we're kind of going through all these developmental milestones. So here we see that we have 1 fourth, and we're being told to cut it into two rows. So that means I'm just going to use one slice to create two rows. There's my two rows. And I see that each of these are eighths. And I know they're eighths because I see that there's four plus four is eight. So we now have eight pieces. So we see that one fourth is equal or equivalent to two eighths. So we're going to write that down. One fourth is equivalent to two eighths. One fourth is equal to one eighth plus one-eighth, which is equal to two-eighths, and one-fourth is equal to two times one-eighth, which is equal to two-eighths. Now, parents and teachers, this is a whole lot of writing for a lot of, you know, for kids. You might think of this as a whole lot of writing, especially if you, like me, we're taught in the old school way of just like one fourth is equal to two eighths. No, duh. It's because like one times two is two and four times two is eight. Duh. You know, um, and I understand that. And that's kind of a thing with Common Core. But parents and teachers going through all of this stuff is worth it because we want our students to develop an understanding of the mathematics going on, not just have them blindly memorize some silly little rule. So more of the same, we're supposed to draw area models to show the decompositions represented um, by the number sentences below. So you have one-third is equal to two-sixths, and we're going to show this, right? So let's start by drawing one-third. So here is our one-third, and I'll shade it in with blue, one-third. Now we know that we want eventually to have six pieces because that's what that six is. We want to have two rows because that's what that two means. So I'm going to 
cut this into two right here, and that makes each of these sixths. So there's a sixth, 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 and there's a sixth. So all of a sudden, one third we can see is the same thing as two sixths. And so uh, what they want us to do is they want us to show that one third is equal to two sixths. One third is equal to one sixth plus one sixth, which is equal to two sixths, and that one third is equal to two times one sixth, which is equal to two sixths. So we can see, like, there's a connection. Here's one sixth plus one sixth. That's the same thing as two times one sixth. So we're making all these connections, and ideally, we're making learning math a little bit more rich this way instead of just teaching them the old standard algorithm. So let's go ahead and take a look at one-fifth is equal to three-fifteenths. So let's see, I'm going to draw my rectangle here. We're going to start by cutting it into fifths because that's what one-fifth is. And one-fifth is right here. So here is my one-fifth and we know that we want eventually to have 15 pieces total and so I am going to cut horizontally into three rows and that creates fifteenths and there's one fifteenth and there's one fifteenth and here is one fifteenth so we see that one fifth ends up being the exact same thing as 3 fifteenths because we have 15 pieces total and three of them are shaded in blue. So let's do that, all that number sentence stuff. So 1 fifth is equal to 3 fifteenths. So we learned that 1 fifth is equal to 1 fifteenth plus 1 fifteenth plus 1 fifteenth which is equal to 3 fifteenths. And then we can see that 1 fifth is equal to 3 times 1 fifteenth, which is also equal to 3 fifteenths. And then lastly, uh, they keep taking away scaffolding each step of the way. Really masterfully done. Explain why. 1 12th plus 1 12th plus 1 12th plus 1 12th is the same as 1 third. Another, one, another way of saying that, explain why 1 third is equal to 4 twelfths. Because we know that this is equal to 4 twelfths. So we're going to start with 1 third. We're going to draw our rectangle thing. It's not really perfect, but that's okay we will survive. There is our one-third. And we want it to eventually have 12 pieces. So how am I going to cut this? So instead of having three pieces, we end up with 12 pieces. Well, it means each one of these needs to be cut into four pieces. So we now have, so this third is cut into four. This third is cut into four. And this third is cut into four. So we now have 12 pieces all together. So that means this little piece is 1 12th. This little piece is 1 12th. 1 12th. And 1 12th. So we now have 4 12ths. So there is our drawing. And if we wanted to, we can say that, hey, look, 1 third is equal to and I'm going to kind of skip a little bit here. 1 12th plus 1 12th plus 1 12th plus 1 12th. So I get all of these from right here. And that's equal to 4 times 1 12th. And that's equal to 4 twelfths. So therefore, 1 third is equal to 4 twelfths. Woohoo! And that wraps up 4th grade Module 5, Lesson 5, where we're using the area model to show things like 1 fourth being equal to 3 twelfths.